你把我的我的我的啦。Dear listener, you're welcome to the audio library of Dunamis International Gospel Center. This message will communicate to you the principles, presence, and power of God that will transform your life and destiny. Dr. Paul is the senior pastor, Dunamis International Gospel Center, Abuja. Be blessed as you listen. Thank you. We praise your name, Almighty God. Covenant, covenant keeping. Thank you for your auspicious presence. Blessed be your name, Lord. Thank you, Master. You are all welcome. Psalm one one eight, verse seventeen. I shall not die, but live. Anyone who shall not die before your time, but live, shout the loudest, Amen. Shout the loud most, Amen. Say, I shall live. Say, I shall not die. But leave and declare the works of the Lord. I shall not die. I shall leave to declare the works of the Lord. Say after me, no matter what happens, I shall not die before my time. I shall leave to declare. The works of the Lord. Help me prophesy to three people. Tell them I shall not leave. You are prophesying about yourself, then about them. I shall not leave, but I shall not die, but leave to declare the works of the Lord. Say it louder. I shall leave. I shall not die. To declare the works of the Lord. Give the Lord the praise as you take your seat. That was Psalm 1. 1, 8, verse 17. Our objective this night and the subject is forces of life. Or the forces of life. Our objective tonight is to understand the forces of life. There are there is an interplay of forces. That contribute. To both the dignity and durability of life. Life is like a system that is made up of an interplay of forces. Like the automobile system where you have the engine system that makes up the engine and then the metallurgical system and then the hydraulic system with the brake and then the electrical system and so on and diverse system interplaying to make it work in the same manner the dignity of life the durability of life the quality of life and the quantity of life there are forces put together that can make it happen. What are these? Number one is the force of vision. Which happens to be the theme of our month. The force of vision. We are looking at vision 
vision simply is the positive imagination of the future. The positive imagination of the future. We say positive because there is also a negative imagination. Also, vision is insight into God's plan and purpose for a person's life. Insight into God's plan and purpose. Where you have the insight and the understanding that you are not on the earth by chance. Insight into God's plan and purpose for a, a person's life. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. He said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Says the Lord. Thoughts of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. Another translation says, I know the plan I have for you. Plans of good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Vision is when you have an understanding. That you are not existing on earth as an accident. Vision is when you have an understanding. That your life is not an experiment on the earth. Vision is when you have an understanding. That you were not created by an absent minded God. It appears like I'm, I'm the only person on fire here tonight. Vision is where you understand that you did not just happen to, on the earth. Somebody happened to you. Because when you don't have a vision, you just think that you are just living, you, you just came to exist and you can die any day. He said, I know the plans I have for you. They are plans of good. Not for disaster. And my plan includes a future. So you can't be cut short anyhow. To give you a future and a hope. Kai, vision just make you day. <laughs> you just, you, you just day. You tell every witch in your village, I am not here by chance. I am not just moving my life. Someone is moving me. Somebody say, I am not existing by chance. I didn't come by mistake. And I cannot die by mistake. Take your seat. That was why he said in Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18 where there is no vision. They die like chicken if they don't know why they are alive. They just die like chicken if they think there is no reason why they are alive. The force of vision. It just keeps you around. The devil notwithstanding. The witches and the bitches and the lizards and the wizards notwithstanding. Joseph had too much vision to be killed by the envy of his brothers. He had too much vision to be buried by jealousy.
You see, I dreamt a dream. All of you here now, I saw the bundles of your grass buying down for my own. They say, eh? Who do you think you are? They hated him. He said, I have dreamt another dream more. This time, 11 stars plus the sun and the moon, they are buying for me. So let us kill this dreamer and see how this vision can come to pass. Not knowing that a man of vision is not killable. The very reason why they cannot kill him is the reason why they say they want to kill him. It's an abnormal, it's an error to say let us kill him and see how his vision can come to pass. Vision is what is making you not to be able to kill him. And it's the reason why you say you want to kill him. Plus one minus one is zero. And you could have killed him easily if he has not seen the future. If he's not living for anything, you could have killed him easily. But now that he has seen there, you can't finish him here. I say now that he has seen there, you can't finish him here. He survived his brother's bitterness, envy, jealousy. You know we have that plenty in Nigeria. Envy, jealousy. There are people looking at you now. You have not even become anything yet. And they want to die. They should get ready because we are about to start. You are about to start. You are about to become something. Somebody shout power. Look at your neighbor. Say, tell them. Why do they want to die now? When I have not started. When I start. What would they do? Joseph passed through the prison. He couldn't stop him. He became a slave. He couldn't stop him. Because he carried too much inside. He carried too much inside. To be finished by bitterness and by envy. And by jealousy. I speak to somebody here. The vision you carry. And what God has planned for your life. And for your destiny. Has made it impossible for them to kill you before your time. It has made it impossible for them to kill you before your time. Somebody shout power. The person they wanted to kill, he was 17 years old. 17 years old. When they say, let us kill him. And see how his vision could come to pass. They couldn't kill him at 30. They couldn't kill him at 40. They couldn't kill him even at 50. Not at 60. Not at 70. Not at 80. Not at 90. Not at 100. He was 110 years. Before he died, 110 from age 17, death was looking for him. <laughs> Maybe you are 30 now, you have escaped some accidents. And you say, why is death looking for me like this? That one from age 17, death was looking for him. Death could not find him. Until he surrendered himself voluntarily at 110. Genesis chapter 50, verse 26. Take your seat. So Joseph died, being 110 years. I don't care how long death looked for you. It came too late if you have him, if you are a man of vision. What of our master, Jesus Christ? Many of us, we knew that Jesus resurrected. But we don't know the various reasons why, how he resurrected. First, he defeated hell and death in the grave. Secondly, he had the power of sinless perfection. 
So it was not possible for death to hold him. Thirdly, he was seeing the throne. So they couldn't keep him in the grave. In Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2, the Bible says, For the joy that was set before him, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. While he was on the cross, he was seeing the throne. He was seeing where he was going. He endured the cross, despised the shame, until he arrived where he was. He has been seen all this while and sat down. The right hand of God the Father. He said, you who have been suffering me, I am seen there. Do every nailing. Go ahead, nail, nail. Go ahead. Finish on time. I am seen there. Take me all out. Just go into the grave. I am seen there. The only way you can keep me here is to block my eyes from seeing there. <laughs> hey! Just, just you, if you can block the eyes of my mind and block my vision and block my imagination, then you can keep me in my situation. But if you cannot block my vision and not block my imagination, just, just get set because I'm about to escape from here and I'm about to go and just take my seat that has been prepared for me from the foundation of the world. Somebody shout power! Look at your neighbor. Say, don't have an empty mind. So that you don't have an empty future. Can I say something to you tonight? Enough is enough. Of moving about like a planless entity. Enough is enough. Of behaving as if you just happened by accident. Enough is enough. Of behaving as if God, God is not aware that you are alive. What is occupying your mind is, there is too much purpose keeping me on it. Too much purpose. Too much assignment. Too much destiny. There are demons that need to be chased back to hell. There are whole communities I need to set free. There are children I need to raise and deliver from poverty and wretchedness. There are, there are families I need to assist. I, I, I am too needed here to be released out of here. Somebody shout the loudest, amen. Take your seat. If I stopped here. I have already over preached. I came here angrily tonight. This is my third preaching today. You are aware I was in Kubo. And then the youth camp where I preached for almost two hours. And I am here this evening. Living and enjoying my life. <laughs> Just enjoying my life. You, I, if, you, if you want I, you can give me microphone to preach to unbeliever and I can pay you for ass, giving me that assistance <laughs> for helping me I can, I can actually pay you for assisting me to preach to somebody and kick out some devils the power of vision is your the force of vision is force number one to keep you here. Number two is the force of thought. The force of thought. Thought is a major determinant of life. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23 and in verse 7. And guard your thought with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of your life. Quality.
quality of thought affects quality of life. The limit of thought is the limit of life. Your life cannot accommodate what your thought cannot accommodate. The power of thought. What are you always thinking about? What is it that occupies your thought most of the time? That thing affects your life. You cannot think death and have life. It's not possible to be thinking death and yet be having life. You cannot think sickness and have wholeness. Israel thought of themselves as grasshoppers. And they died like grasshoppers in the wilderness. In Numbers chapter 13 verse 33. They say we are like grasshoppers in our own sight. There we saw the giants, sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. They thought of themselves as grasshoppers. And they could not escape the grasshopper level. None of them entered the promised land. They died as grasshoppers because your thought affects your result. On the other hand, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, he, he thought he saw himself as a giant driving warrior at the age of 85 and he got his inheritance in Joshua chapter 14 verse 10 you, you know it already Joshua chapter 14 verse 10 all the way to verse 14 and now behold the Lord has kept me alive as he said these 40 and 5 years even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness and now lo I am this day first call, that is 85 years old. As yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Now therefore give me this mountain, whereof the Lord spake in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakims were there. And that the cities were great and first. If so be, the Lord will be with me. Then I shall be able to drive out. As the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him. And gave unto Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, Hebron, for an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, unto this day. Because that he wholly followed the God of Israel. See, giants were there. Now, I discovered something I have never discovered before. When Caleb said, as my strength was then for war, so is my strength now to go out for war. I began to look for where Caleb ever fought war. I couldn't find one. I said, okay, it was at that time that they were, they were that, that um, the Amalekites came against Israel and Moses was on the mountain and people held his hand. It was that war. Then I realized Caleb was, didn't fight that war. He wasn't involved. Aaron was holding Moses' hand on one hand. Hall was holding the other hand. Joshua was the one with the sword in the battle, leading the war. Caleb was not in the picture. Okay, what, where else? The second place was where they said, go and search the land. Where they went and brought report. They didn't fight no war. This man imposed warrior on himself by force. <laughs> he 
said for war, as my strength is then. With strength, what did you use the strength for ever? Not once. For war, to go out, to come in. I'm sure Joshua must have been looking at him and saying, what came on this boy now? When I was holding the sword and fight the Amalekites, where were you? You are now talking war. Okay, go and push out the Amalekites, let's say. Go and push out the giant. Take the land. And he went and drove them out. Because as he thinketh in his heart, Ay, 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 As he thinketh in his heart. So you see, stand up on your feet and look at somebody and say, What are you thinking? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Not too long ago, I got angry. We are going to travel to somewhere, a program, something far country. And they said that uh, well, we should, uh, should bring our passport and they wanted us physically to come to the embassy. For one reason, I got very angry. Why should they ask somebody to come to the embassy like that all the time? I said, when was the last time they asked a president to visit the embassy to get a visa? I told my wife, I said, I am not going. It is their country that need me. I have work here. I'm not going. If they cannot give the visa without me coming there physical, then I don't need it. She communicated with whoever. They said, okay, let them bring the passport. Passport was sent in the same day. Visa was stamped the same day. Returned back the same day. As he think it in his heart. Don't over blame the devil. What are you thinking? Caleb who had never fought one war before. Never fought one war before. Say I am a warrior. Able to go out and drive the giants. And, and, and Joseph, uh, uh, Joshua said, go and try. Take and go and try. And he went and drove them. Friends, get ready. Something is about to happen to you. Every negative mindset and negative mentality that has plagued your mind all this while, I declare it deleted right now. You are the kind of person that should tell the devil, I cannot be, I am not an edible material for any witch. No witch can drink my blood. It is not possible. They can't approach where I live. They shall be roasted alive. Somebody shout power. Help me walk to several people. Tell them what are you thinking? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Somebody shout power. Take your seat. Think the word. Think the word. Think the word. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, but you meditate day and night to observe to do. Think the word. You will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Keep your mind on God. And of course, I just quickly told you what to think. Think the word. Think on God. Think about pre past victories. The God who delivered me from the lion and the bear. He would deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine. If God ever set you free before, he can set you free again. If he has ever set anybody free before that you know, he can set you free as well. Think the word. Think on God. Think the word. Joshua 1.8. Think on God. Isaiah 26 and in verse 3. And think. 
past victories. First Samuel chapter 17 from verse 34 to 37. So we have the force of vision that is necessary to enhance the dignity and durability of your life. Then we have the force of thought where you are too aware that you are not here to be wasted is anyhow. And then number three, you have the force of faith. The force of faith. Faith is a major force for the sustenance of life. Major force. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Now the just shall live by his faith. But the just shall live by his faith. Romans chapter 1 verse 17. The righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Galatians chapter 3 verse 11. Now, the just shall live. The just shall live. But that no man is justified by the law in his sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 38. Now, the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul has have no pleasure in him. How can one thing be repeated four times? In the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is confirmed. Now this is repeated four times. For double emphasis. Also we know that faith is a shield for life. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Whereby you shall be able to quench the flaming arrows of darkness. Shield of faith. Every attack on your faith is a jeopardy of your life. That is why the devil wants to shake people's faith. Where is God? Where is God? If God is alive, what happened? He wants to shake people's faith to put their life in, in danger. When your faith is out of place, your life can easily move out of space. Faith is the antidote for fear. And you know that fear is the magnet of disaster. Job chapter 3 verse 25, Job said, The things which I fear has come on me. So if you don't want things to come on you, avoid fear. And to avoid fear, you must embrace faith. In the, in the time in which we live, it is very difficult not to fear. Am I communicating? You hear all manner of news here and there. Manner of killings and kidnap, all manner things that will shake the faith. But your faith is the preservative for your life. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Abraham was the father of faith, according to scripture. He lived sicklessly. Somebody say sickless. Sicklessly and to a very great age. Genesis 25 verse 7 to 8. Abraham lived to age 175 years without one trace of affliction. Your faith. Your faith. And you charge your faith with light. This kind of message you are hearing now. The kind of message... No weapon formed. Who gathered them? Power over the enemy. You have overcome them. Those kind of messages, they charge your faith. And, and your faith, your faith discharges your fear. When your faith is charged, your fear is discharged. You didn't hear what I said? When your faith is charged, your fear is discharged and you are in charge. So you use the word to charge your faith. You use the word of God to charge your faith and discharge your fear and take charge of your situations. The force 
of, of faith says, I cannot die just like that. No. Elephant picking cannot suffer convulsion. The born, the, the, how he has been born, his body is too big for convulsion. No. No. Hair does not grow on forehead. No. No. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? No. There are things that are not permitted to happen. Mad people, no market day. <laughs> they can be they can be lying down there at uh, Ukwo, um, <laughs> okay, and just be li- and, and just be lying down there when it, when it is not the, the K market or a market. But on that day, they clear out. Nobody advises them because the real owners have arrived. You know that. You know that. You see, the devil f- smells fear. The devil knows if you are afraid of him. Am I communicating at all? You must make up your day to keep your faith aflame. Anytime you see fear coming small, look for raw materials. Don't let the scriptural kai kai clear from your eyes. <laughs> you see, because people manifest drunkenness only when they are drunk. A real drunk is sober without alcohol. <laughs> are you following what I'm saying? And so you don't just have those in between time. Maintain your charge. Maintain your charge. Somebody said today they saw me ministering at um, the, 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 the Kubo place. Of, what is that? Otako this morning. And saw me ministering at um, the youth church, youth in the morning. And this evening now, they will still see me again ministering with fire again in the, in the, in the midweek service. I said, that is notoriously factual. <laughs> By his grace, it's a notorious fact. Because what it takes to maintain the charge is continuously on. Somebody say amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor. Say don't don't give room for for, for, for your faith to get weak. Continuously charge your faith. Continuously charge your faith. Continuously charge your faith. Somebody shout the loudest. Amen. Take your seat. Anybody got something tonight? What was the first number one? Vision number two. And number three. Number four is the force of hope. Hope. Hope to him that is joined to the living. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 8. There is hope. And a living dog is better than a dead lion. There is hope. Nine four rather. Please. Nine four. To him that is joined to the living there is hope. And a living dog is better than a dead lion. Hope. Hope is the oxygen of the soul. Oxygen. 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 Hope is a sustainer of life. Listen. I have seen people manage to survive without friends. And I've seen people manage to survive without money or without much money, just surviving. I have seen people survive without education. I knew of a a multi-millionaire or a billionaire. I heard of him. They saw him in the airport one day. And he doesn't, he's not educated. And he has, he had businesses in almost a hundred countries or so. And somebody asked him, say, you cannot speak English and yet you have, you have business everywhere. 
What is the secret? He said they should hold on. He opened his briefcase and brought a word of dollars. He said this one speaks all languages. <laughs> he said it doesn't matter whether I can speak English provided I am in possession of this one. I, I, I can't speak any language. <laughs> I've seen people survive without education. But nobody can survive without hope. Nobody. Nobody can survive without hope. The end of hope is the beginning of the end of life. Shogba. Apo. Inugo. Inugo. When the time hope has ended, life has begun to end. When somebody say, what is this life all about? While he is talking, demons of death are hearing. Demons, spirits of death are signed to harvest people. What are we living for? What is life all about? Why am I here? Why am I here? He said that once, say that twice, say that thrice. One demon, I his friend, say. This one say he doesn't want to be here. <laughs> he said, he told the demon, do you know your work at all? Our assignment is to kill, to steal, to destroy. Somebody has given us license. What are we waiting for? Next thing, terrible accident. Bam. God forbid. Next thing, says, small fever. He didn't wake up. There are even people they couldn't trace what killed them. Please, no matter what happened, don't ever be hopeless. Take your seat. Because listen, Hope cannot be absent and faith is present. Because faith is the things. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So there can be no, there can be no faith without hope. If hope is not there, faith cannot be there. And if faith is not there, the just shall live by his faith. Hope cannot be absent. And vision is present. You may say that. What, what, what am I living for? You can't see any future. There is no tomorrow to look forward to. Hope cannot be absent. And thought can be correct. Nobody can think right. If he's, if he's hopeless. He'll be thinking suicide. <laughs> One young man. That God helped us to rescue. Master's degree holder, but empty, jobless, nothing was working. He said, he was thinking, if I kill myself now, I will go to hell. Can somebody please kill me? Yes. That is, he was begging. Why doesn't do that vehicle fail break and just hit me? That is where hope is gone. Thought is perverse. It is at that time that people commit suicide. I like to, I would like to let you know. The fact that you are here tonight means that God has a plan for you. That amen can be better. That amen can be better. Show the loudest amen. Look at somebody who says, say, there is hope for you. God has a plan for you. Your future is intact. Listen to this. I'll give you two examples and I'm true. Whether it is the matter of marriage, whether it is the matter, there's nothing that has not happened in scripture. Whether it's a matter of fruitfulness, calm down. It's not too late with God. Even 
if you marry at age 60, you can still have as many children as you want. And you are not going to delay till that age before you get married. Somebody shout yes! If Sarah gave birth for the first time at age 90, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forever. I am the Lord, I change not. And the heavens must hold him until the time of the restoration of all things. All the things we saw in scripture will see it physical before Jesus comes. The Bible said the heavens will hold him until the times of the restoration. So we'll see 90 year old give birth for the first time. We'll see it. Is God speaking to anybody here? Take your seat. Hope keeps your hope preserves you alive. Job, that was Job's story. Job 14 14. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. I'm not shifting, I'm not shifting ground. I did. Devil between me and you, you are the one that will be tired. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your neighbor say I am not shifting ground I am not shifting I am not moving Now say it like this I am not giving I am not giving up Say I am not giving up I am not giving in I am not giving out I am not giving way I did. Say it again. Say, I am not giving up. I am not giving in. I am not giving out. I am not giving way. I did. David's health. I didn't know that David <laughs> expected healing. I don't know from what. But he said, hope assisted him. Psalm 42 verse 11. Psalm 42 verse 11 said, Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? Why are you disquieted within me, hope in God? For I will praise him who is the health of my countenance. Your hope and your praise supplies you health. A hopeless person is a tired person. He doesn't need man to push him down. Wind can blow him. A hopeless person is a helpless person. A hopeless person is lighter in weight than an a fleshless person. Did you know the kind of person I just called? If you didn't hear that language, no challenge. <laughs> Hopeless person. A full of fushers. Tonight, I welcome you to the force of vision, the force of thought, the force of faith, the force of hope. Look at your neighbor, say, charge up your hope with the word of God. Charge up your hope with the testimonies of others. Charge up your hope. Psalm 119 verse 81. My soul fainteth for thy salvation, but I hope in thy word. Psalm 119 verse 114. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. 
I told you the story of a young man that I, I called from the second row or third row, second row at Area One Church. His face was blank. I was seen spiritually empty, hopelessness, everything dry. I said to him, I knew you before. What happened to you? Everything is dry. He said, everything is wrong. Recently, I asked him, I said, can you tell me exactly what was happening to you at that time? He said he was walking before and he had just stepped out of work because even the work he was working could not pay no bills, could achieve nothing for him. Everything was at a standstill at the point I en we encountered each other. He had gone through Dusum, maybe the second set of Dusum before. He had done all these things. He said, but after that word, and I said, he should move forward. His life shifted to the next level. And then, at the second time, we met again. When he came to report himself and how things have changed in the last time we met. And he was doing a sacrifice for this glory dome. He said after that point, he shifted again. He said every single encounter had shifted his life. Until he came to the point where he was at the top of the range. In his line of business in the country. He has people under him that at least earn a million a month. Not one, not two, not ten, not a hundred. Hello? Shifted. That was a hopeless, empty person before. And you are face to face with that same mantle here. Whatever has made your life hopeless, whatever had made it look like nothing good can happen to you, after tonight's service, your shift is confirmed. Your shift is confirmed. Your shift to the next level is confirmed. Are you saying amen? Shout the loudest, amen. Look at your neighbor and say, everything is changing around me. There is hope for me. Things are going to work. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Finally, is the force of love. Love is a force. One of the strongest forces you have ever experienced. Ecclesiastes Chapter 8, verse 6. Did I say Ecclesiastes? Songs of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6. Set me as a seal upon your heart. As a seal upon your arm. For love is as strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals of thereof are coals of fire which has a most vehement flame. Love is as strong as death. What is the meaning? Death can't beat love. Love is equal to the task of death. Love is equal to the challenge of death. Even the force of jealousy cannot defeat love. Because walking in love is walking in God. Second, or first John chapter 4 verse 8, for God is love. Walking in God is what in love is walking in God and death can't beat love. Maybe this will be the most critical revelation somebody will go, go out of here with tonight. When you are loaded with love, you are loaded with life. 
When you are loaded with love, you are loaded to live. Those inviting you on to bitterness are inviting you on to death. Do you remember Job? Was attacked by Satan. What turned Job's captivity was the power of love. Job 42.10 And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. You will think that they are good friends. Anybody can pray for a friend that is a friend indeed. But only love can make you pray for a friend whose presence is equal to the presence of the devil. A friend that if you have, you don't need devil. He's, he, won't, he, won't, he will fulfill the assignment. Any assignment you want the devil to fulfill in your life, he can, the friend can fulfill it. That was the friends that Job had. The friend that multiplied the sorrow of Job. When Job was attacked by the devil, those people came near Job and sat down with him. I think the Bible said for one week, they didn't say anything. Mm. Mm. Chai. Mm. Mm. Bringing depression to suffocate tribulation. Then when they started talking, it was snake venom. Were well, you not a criminal? Are you not the one who took the people's things and oppressed the poor people? In, in, in Job chapter 13 verse 4, Job called them, you are all physicians of no value. Banza, banzastic doctors. <laughs> Killer surgeons, killer surgeons, <laughs> physicians of Nova. I didn't invite you to treat me, and you have worsened my case. That was what the banzastic doctors in Job chapter 16, verse 2. He said, I have heard many such things. You are all talking, Rob. Miserable comforters are all of you. <laughs> who is a miserable comforter? A person whose comfort multiplies your sorrow. It was better he wasn't present. <laughs> Those were the kind of friend Job was praying for. Do you pray for such people or you pray against them? You know, there are people you pray for and there are people you pray against. Job was praying for them. Lord, have mercy on them. Lord, any problem they have, just forgive them. Lord, I hold nothing against them. And then God changed his life. He said, instead of confronting them with bitterness for all the problems they cost you, you are still praying and blessing them. I changed your story. I didn't hear that God answered Job and changed the people's story. <laughs> no. No. No, God will deal with them. God will, de God will deal with them. The prayer Job prayed, I didn't hear that God answered them. Answered them. Because they were bad people. They were bad. <laughs> the guys were bad. <laughs> they were bad people. God did it. it. The problem was not whether God will hear Job and, 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 and deliver the people. The question is that by praying, Job forgave them. You cannot pray for whom you hate. And even if you hate them and you keep praying for a while, the hatred will disappear. Am I communicating at all? Take your seat. It is called the power of love. It's the power to live. 
Paul the apostle was stoned to death. Love surrounded him. Acts chapter 14 verse 20. How be it? Okay, verse 19. And there came feet a certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul drew him out of the city concluding that he has died. How be it as the disciples stood round about him he rose up and he came to the city. What did they surround? They didn't say a word. The same love with which their master Paul loved them, he returned back to, from their hearts unto Paul. And that jerked him back to his feet. The same way that Dockers came back to life, as the widows were showing the cloth that he gave to their children. And Peter prayed, and death took off. Beloved, love is a spiritual therapy. It's a treatment. It's both a prophylactic treatment, that is a preventive treatment, and an active therapy. Love. What do I say to you, beloved, tonight? Love people. Wish people well. Don't ever look at people and feel like, this person has overtaken me. He has succeeded too much. What? No. Love people. Wish people well. Enhance the value of people's lives. Be committed to changing people's lives. And forgive liberally. I've said three things. Love people. Wish people well. Enhance the value of people's lives. That is making deposits into people's lives. Whose school fees you can pay. Whose widow's accommodation you can pay. Whose hospital bill you can assist in. Love people. Wish people well. Enhance the value of people's lives. Make deposits or dividends. In people's lives. Finally. Forgive liberally. Liberally. And if you have. The gift. Of unforgiveness. You know. There are people who have that gift. The word of knowledge. The word of wisdom. Design of spirit. Unforgiveness of people. It's one of these spiritual gifts. They can follow people to their grave. You know somebody died some time ago and some, one man was crying very bitterly. He said, oh, you must love him so much. He said, no, he died with my money. He's owing me money. <laughs> they, they told him, he's owing him money. He's owing him money. The debt didn't pay him. Is the money. <laughs> that is how wicked people are. There are people who will remind you what you did in 1975. Say, I have forgiven you, but I didn't forget. 1975. I think it was 2nd January. <laughs> in fact, around 1 o'clock. <laughs> That is the gift of unforgiveness of people. It's a disaster. It takes you straight to hell. Apart from suffering you very well on the earth here. If you have such a gift, Lord, I don't need the gift. Give me the gift of revelation instead. Working on miracles. Am I communicating at all? But there are people that plenty of people like that. Husband and wife. Some is the wife. Some is the husband. See, anything you do, it will remind you in 15 years. There are people who have a book of record. 
But they have to record this so they don't forget. One of the things God has helped me with is to forget issues easily. One day, a young man came to me and said he's very, very sorry. He had been a minister of mission. And he wasn't a, say he's very, very sorry for what he did and so forth and so on. And I asked him, I said, what did you do? I couldn't remember, frankly. I couldn't remember at all. He was the one who reminded me, oh, that there's something about money. This and that. I said, oh, okay. It is gone now. Forget about it. You are, you are, you are pardoned. Because it is not possible to remember everything and function at this rate. It's not possible. It's not practically possible. You have only one mind. Which one will you use to organize progress? It's a new day for you. I see the spirit of love working upon you. And if you are that person, you shout the loudest amen. Stand up on your feet and shout the loudest amen. There are people you will forgive tonight. But let me warn you. There are people you will try to forgive. And they will bring more quarrel. Don't bother. Say, I just want to test, send you this test message to say, everything you did against me, I forgive you. Say, what do you mean? Uh -huh. So you are beholding me. There are people like that. <laughs> if, if you notice such a thing, maybe let wisdom direct you. Let wisdom direct you. And there are people you avoid. You don't hate them. Because mixing and interaction will generate tension and heat and offense. So you just gently, oh, good morning, bless you. You avoid. Avoid the company of gossips. Avoid it. It, it, it. it brings you into a lot of offense. Avoid those who bring issues to you. Say somebody says something about you. Avoid such people. Those who can flatter can slander. Those who brought something to you from somebody will take something from you to another person. Avoid, avoid such companies. So you can keep your heart clean and live your life and run this race well. No time to be bitter. There is too much to do. Somebody came to me one day. He said, after a, a, a session of conference in the morning, I finished preaching in the morning. He said, ah, people are bad. Though. Can you imagine one of those who came for this conference, in fact, he's a pastor, just outside, that's in area one, just outside, he's just talking against you. And uh, I said, uh, amen, God is faithful. So when will you be going back? <laughs> The matter was caught on the spot. The person who talked to me wasn't a bad person. He was genuinely concerned that people can be that bad. That somebody who just heard you preaching now is saying anything. This will be over 10 to 15 years now. I have not asked who was that person or what was the name. Because what will it profit me to know? Because if I know, I see him sitting tomorrow. I'll be preaching and maybe move near him. Some of you. <laughs> that is, you want to spoil my message and, and instead of facing the whole people, face one person. That you're wasting everybody's time. The message of one. It doesn't help me, so I didn't need to know who the person is. Let him say, let me still be shaking hands with the person. And be laughing with him. Let it heap coals of fire on his head. Praise the Lord. God will grant us grace. Amen. How many of you have heard of S.A. Sadella? He was the elderly man of the Christ Apostolic Church who worked with Apostle Babalola. He was 114 years old before he died. Look at his picture there. 113 years. 
He died just about five years ago. Somebody say, what is the secret of your long life? You say, I love everybody. I don't hate people. I love everybody. He said, people came and, and were telling him about his master, Babalola in those days. I think the man's wife had him, gave him so much trouble. They were telling him about, and they were saying, trying to talk. And he looked at them and he said, look at you, talking about the man. You are better than the man, yet God ignored you and chose the man. You are more perfect than him, yet God avoided you. Shouldn't it be a lesson to you that God avoided you? <laughs> God saw you and avoided you. You who are better than the man, he avoided you and chose him. Then you must, you must respect that oil. It means there is something God saw in him that he couldn't find in you. That made him to avoid you and anoint him. The word is, he avoided you. That was how he answered people. I can't hate the man. I, no. So let's keep our life. Keep your love. Keep your hope in place. Keep your faith in place. Keep your thought in order. And keep your vision alive. And you will fulfill your days. Anybody blessed tonight? Confirm it to God by lifting up your hands and giving him the praise. Lift your hands and give him the praise. Lift your hands and give him the praise. Lift your hands and give him the praise. Give him the honor. Give him the adoration. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for tonight. Thank you for tonight. We thank you for tonight. Let us soko bagadaga laga yada la ba yada ba yada hashata la ba yaba yata sala. Be shoke freti kaziga la baranasta. We thank you for tonight. 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 Blessed be your name. Ancient of days. The I am that I am. The lily of the valley. The rose of Sharon. We love you. We honor you. We magnify you. Be glorified Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Well, lift up your hands everywhere and say after me, say, Father. Say it louder. Say, Father, I come before you. I need your help to flow in vision for the future. I need your help to keep my thought in order. I need your help to keep my faith alive. I need your help. To keep my hope alive. I need your help. To live in love. And forgiveness. To be free. From bitterness. I need your help. I receive that help. Now. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and give him the praise. And begin to and speak to him. I need that help. Never if you are my banner of victory at all times. I will trust you, I shall never know defeat I'll trust you in the night time I will trust you in the day Lord I'll trust you every moment I Lord I'll trust you I'll trust you I'll trust you in the night time. I'll 
up your hands everywhere and say father I receive your help and I receive your mercy tonight we'll take the first verse and the second the first verse and the chorus while we are doing that you are here tonight you intend for your sins to be forgiven you want today to mark a new day for you you are saying to me pastor all the things you have preached yes I believe it but I want Jesus to be Lord of my life. I want to be genuinely born again. I want to be free from the spell and power of sin. Place your right hand on your chest. And say after me, Lord Jesus. I come before you today. To surrender my life to you. I am a sinner. In need of help. Come into my life, Lord. Make me a new person. Today. I have decided to follow you, Lord. No turning back forward ever backward never thank you Lord in Jesus name Amen I pray for you I declare the hold of sin broken off your life and the grace to live for God is released upon you I call it done in Jesus name Amen You are coming back with your testimony You are coming back with your testimony we do believe that you have been blessed by this message. To place your order for audios and DVDs of our messages, please contact us plus 234-80-332-00320 plus 234-80-331-44509 plus 234-704-007-4930 or visit our website at www.dynamisgospel.org Remember, the devil is not in control. God is in control. Baby, Allah, can't stop it. Child, Allah, can't stop it. Nobody can stop it. Nothing, nothing, nothing can stop it. You are coming back with your testimony. You are coming back with your testimony. 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 Back with your testimony.